Higher housing prices are good. Could you imagine if they told us higher food prices were good? But they're very much the same. They're similes because they're both essential human needs. So it's very fair to use that analogy. Do you understand? Please, please, please try if you don't understand. Okay, but if there is a disruption in the supply chain, sometimes things might get more expensive temporarily. Temporarily. Until you and say, we've got to oversupply this thing so this doesn't happen again. Because we want our money to go up in worth. So in order for our money to go up in worth, the prices of stuff needs to go down steadily, gradually. We don't care how fast, but we want this game we call capitalism to be run fairly. We don't mind playing this game temporarily till we render the need for money irrelevant. You see, that's what these evildoers don't want to happen. They want the opposite to happen, and they've gotten their way for well over half a century that I know of since the assassination of JFK. Understand, you, you get what I'm saying here? We're in a lot of trouble. These politicians have gone against the will of over 90% of the American people, that bailout. We're in debt of over, what, $25 trillion and climbing. I mean, where are we headed? I mean, does it? Does anybody in the mainstream media talk about the implications there? Who's going to end up paying this when we're creating more and more wealthy people every day, more and more multi-billionaires, and that disparity, that imbalance, that division between the haves and have-nots, the rich and the poor, that wealth imbalance keeps growing and growing. And, and what do we think? I mean, we and we're supposed to be setting an example for other countries. We're the laughing stock of other countries. With the homelessness, hell, I got a friend from Palestine. He mocks me. He mocks America about how they've got no, he shames me. No, we have no homelessness in Palestine. Idiot. Idiot Americans. Hell, I bet they've got less homelessness in Mexico. I'll bet you. I'll bet you they've got less homelessness in Mexico than in America. This is why I voted for Trump. We got this stupid questionnaire. This idiot questionnaire in the mail, right? Everybody got that? It's hokey. But I filled it out and I told him, hey, stick to what you said, Trump. You said you're ashamed of homelessness. I am too. Okay. We call ourselves a Christian nation. For what? For shame. What does it say in your Bible? What did Jesus say? Whatsoever you do or fail to do for the least of these, you do or fail to do for me. What? Don't you understand about that? A five-year-old child can understand that. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If we just live by the laws that God gave us, these simple laws, his yoke is easy, his load is light. He doesn't want to be burdensome. What good parent wants to burden their children? Wife's hard enough. No, it's pure. He loves you. He wants the best for you. Okay, his yoke is easy, his load is light. Love God above all else. That makes perfect sense. You wouldn't know that what the hell love was. Without being created, you owe your creator your existence, your life, everything you've ever enjoyed in your whole life. Uh, a, an entity that cannot be blamed for anything bad ever. He had to give us free will choice. That's to blame. If you want to blame something, say we were tricked by the devil and God let us be tricked. Well, what? You, you, you want to be an automaton? That's the option we all had. Okay? unthinking brute beasts. That's what makes us entirely unique from all the other creatures. We're these godlike creatures with virtually infinite ability to grow, to expand. Infinite potential on all fronts. I mean, you know, it's just going to get better and better and better for all eternity. That's the way it is. If you're on the right path, the blessings will just keep coming and coming and coming. And it just makes sense. It's what God would want to give you. It's what your good parent would want to give you their children. Only the best forever. Nothing bad. Anything bad, i got to take it away. I'm going to remove it. If I've got that power, and that's the power that God has. And all we need is a little bit of faith to believe he's going to get the job done. And it's all going to unfold. I don't know exactly how, but I mean, I believe it's happening right now. God is starting to put his foot down. He's losing his cool. Okay. But we can get away from this thing we call money. That runs us around by the nose, but we're in trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. And these evildoers do not want <coughs> to turn this ship of fool around, fools around. They want to keep getting their way. They're, 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 
They're drunk on the blood of saints, power drunken freaks. Okay, that's what they are. It's a freak show. And we're all stuck in the middle of it. And uh, we've all got to, you know, confront this thing. We've all got to carry our fair share of weight of the cross and do something. We've got an obligation and responsibility to God and to man, to ourselves. If we want happiness for ourselves, we must do this thing. We must confront the evil in the land, speak truth to power, and understand your facts. Understand what's going on, the dynamics, how powerful the, these forces are. These evil forces that hate you just because you're made in the image and likeness of God. They know their destiny. They know what they're traitors to humanity. They're elitists. They're hypocrites. They can't help themselves. They're, 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 they're out of their freaking minds. And you... You, like Friedrich Nietzsche said, you know, be careful to stare into the abyss too long when fighting these monsters because you'll become the abyss. And that's what can happen because they are so freaky. Okay, and what they've done to our reality, our so-called reality, is so off the charts. Okay, in every way, there's nothing that makes sense in our society at all. This whole monetary-based unreality, it's going to be com completely gone, obliterated. And can you imagine what a departure that is? How many sorrowful people there will be that love money. They love their lives in this world. It's worked really well for them. And so they're going to be really, you know, downcast, sorrowful, traumatized, bummed out that their money is going to be rendered irrelevant. Okay, if they want to be there, I mean, they've got to make their own choice. It's a very individual, personal choice we make to be saved for and be found worthy and deserving of inheriting a better life, a better world, a better reality, or to be to fail, be you're out. It's and there's a passage from Revelation where it talks about when on judgment day and God's finding people that are they're lukewarm and he, and he says, well, you know, I can't decide. I mean, if you are hotly evil, it's easy. You're, well, that's obviously that's that's obviously an evil person that's bent on evil and They've decided they're my uh, eternal enemy. They've challenged me, and they're defiant toward me, and they've rebuked me, and they've committed blasphemy against the Holy Spirit of truth. They've denied me, and they, that's it. They're my sworn enemy. They're clear. I know they're on their way to Hades, but it's all those lukewarm, the, the, you know, the minions of these madmen, these psychos that are bent to on going to hell. Okay, they, because they'll be miserable in heaven. What's God supposed to do? He's a nice God, but he can't just let his servants, his righteous servants, his saints, be bullied around indefinitely. How fair would that be to the righteous? And he has the last say. He has all the power ultimately. And that's what's coming down here. That's what we're facing here. Big, big changes. Monumental, biblical level sea changes. Unprecedented in all of human history. That's the point we're at right now. And it all has connected to the information age. That's it, man. Because in the book of Daniel, read the last chapter in the book of Daniel. You'll see. He talks about the knowledge being greatly increased upon the earth right before the end. And the end means the end of the age, not the end of the world. It doesn't ever say that in the Bible. It's a continuum. But it's going to be a traumatic time for a lot of people. There are going to be a lot of sorrow, a lot of sadness. Okay, a lot of lamenting. Okay, we've got to help people. We've got to be there for them, to comfort them and encourage them, let them know, hey, I'll always be there for you. I want to serve you. <laughs> I'll, I'll serve anybody. You know, I love you. You're my fellow human being, and I must love you. I must do right. To, and that's God telling me i got to serve you. i got to do something. I can't be useless. I must be useful. I'm con compelled, utterly compelled. I can't be gratified. I can't be satisfied. I can't sleep at night. I can't look myself in the mirror. I can't enjoy my food without being useful. That's what we all must be. So I know a world system could work perfectly fine without any form of money at all. And you've got to know that too and spread that. And understand nobody has to worry about nothing. God just wants prosperity for all of us. Nobody's going to lose anything. We're all going to gain. Even the, the rich people, if they looked at it right and they decide, I'm going to be in my mind. Hey, all it means is you'll probably give away a whole lot of your stuff. You'll say, wait a minute, I'll be fine with 500 million bucks, but the rest of this stuff should go. I mean, I want to be answerable to God on Judgment Day. I, I don't want to be lukewarm on the fence here. I don't want him to puke me out of his mouth.
because that's what's going to happen here. You didn't make it like a landscaper pulling weeds. Some are obvious. Oh, yeah, for sure. And the others, he might say, well, does the homeowner give me approval because they might like the flower that weed puts out? So you got to ask yourself those questions. Did you consult with the homeowner, whoever hired you to do the work, whoever's yard you're working in? Okay, that only makes sense, right? They're in that environment day in and day out. So no money has to exchange hands, but still they get to say, they get a say, but the landscaper has discretion. Some weeds are on the border. And you say, okay, I'm using my own discretion. I'm pulling these out. And God is the gardener. 